Despite various bids and fierce competition from as far afield as Sunderland and Belfast, the decision to build a liner on the Clyde was absolutely unanimous! Hello! I thought it was all over. Everything we fought for finished. But we've got the order. We're brand new, hunky-dory. There is a God in heaven, and he's our man. He is our China, brand new. And now the order's come, it's daft to worry, so it is. On a day like this, there's no point. On you go, son. Magic, we are a people. These are the good old days. Me, worry, must have been half my nut. She'll be grand. A queen. Well, I could treat you like a dumpling and ask you to go for a long stand. Or to go down to the joiner shop and get a bubble for a spirit level, but I'll know. I'll treat you as mere than a laddie. Thanks, Mr. Mackay. Roddy. I will, thanks, Roddy. We have you a Catholic for donkeys, but you come well recommended, sir. Your old man and me. He was your left hand. That's right. I often talked about you. Oh, you'll not see much of the riveting in here now. It's mostly the welding these days. Aye. You got the road for about three days' training, you come out a tradesman. Change days, eh? So what will I do? You'll boil the cans. That's the first test. Try and make some tea that the spoon can stand up in. By the way, this is Frank. You all right, son? All right. And this is the dummy. How's he going? He can't speak, but he's an artist of a sort. He used to hold on with his head. He sees magic bunnet. He sees your bunnet, Lawrence. See this? It's all caked up with congealed sparks. It's like a helmet, you know? A knight's helmet. A knight's helmet in olden days, you know? The dummy's bonnet. I am Ethan. Well, this is no paying the rent or buying the wife a penis down and about here. <coughs> no, you're right. I'm going. I was just going. Flop. Siberian here. You've got to keep moving, Frankie. They're doing a stock check at Madame Tussauds. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, just keeping warm, son. Just keeping warm. 
you really want to know, I'm contemplating making a start. So what will I do? But you can do son is watch and listen. You might learn something. When you get fed up with that, you can boil the can. Aye, right. You never get used to how sharp the wind is. Sooner we get some plates up round about us here, sooner we'll take the sting off the wind for the water. Aye, I know, it cuts right three. Aye, it brings it back. Christ, there was one winter, there was icicles in folks' beards. Was that back in the good old days? Was it fuck? <laughs> you stood in a line, sometimes in a bunch, hoping the foreman would take a shine to you. Sometimes it was fixed in the pub the night before if you had the price of a hall for him. Then you get picked. Sometimes you didn't. Eh? Sometimes you didn't try to get picked. You'd lost faith in yourself. You weren't sure you were up to the job. You'd been idle that long. Idle set was thriving. You weren't even very sure what it was you were feeling till you read in the paper about poverty. Then you had a name for it. No, these weren't of the good old days, son. No matter what sentimental shout the Olgins tell you. Christ, I remember standing in a line. My feet were freezing. My eyes were stinging with a blast. My horns were all chapped. I didn't want a job. I tried to hide behind the other bloke so the phone wouldn't would spot me. I mean, it sounds daft when there wasn't a job to be had. But I'd gone gait, I suppose. But see, we thought that was for the likes of folk that had been to the war and get shell shocked. I mean, we hadn't been anywhere, but we were shell shocked just the same. So what happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Some folk went to Australia, Canada, New Jersey. Some folk stuck it out. And eventually there was an order. Eventually there's always an order. It's just that eventually becomes a word that signifies a longer and longer amount of time. But here we are. We've got the order. Brand new. No more standing in line. No more waiting for the nod for the foreman. Everybody's got a job that wants a job. Doesn't be mad that hoffies will go deep with the noise. The joint's jumping. Listen, you can't even work it. Now, I'm no been anti-German when I say this, boys, but the Huns were a jammy bastards that fucked us up good and proper. Them and the Clogies. Oh, nothing good ever came to us for the land of the windmill. I wouldn't have a fucking chill up in the house. <laughs> you see, 
They were working at 54 hours while well, we were doing 47. They work more, we work less. And the Japs, we don't start me. When they'd hung up their kamikazes, they were doing 60 hours. They even had floodlights in the air, so the nips wouldn't know when it was time to knock off. <laughs> Jammy bastards. Who won the war, eh? No us. No up here anyway. No. We lost our lives, same as the soldiers. We lost our lives, same as some tear shipwrecked sail at the bottom of the sea. At least the soldiers didn't live long enough to see the ball burst flat. Well, no money them anyway. We've got the work now, Huey. Aye, so you sub. We have. I know you sub, but for how long, but? Now, you can't put it past the bastards. If the Germans or the Japs or the Swedes or the Clogies can give them a boat at a cheaper price, even the British government will place an order there. there. You mark my words, I've done it before, I'll do it again. You mark my words. But the Japs can't do what we do. Aye, true enough, Patrick, but maybe folk aren't as interested in what you do as you are. Maybe folk don't give two fucks about finish and line and craftsmanship. Some folk will go through life in a leaky boat as long as it gets them to port. I've seen it. You've seen everything here. Aye, and I've heard everything, I know. Oh, they gobchites on about rationalisation and demarcation and agitation and working and sitting, stone and sit still, keep moving up. I have seen decent blokes turn into demagogues when they was elected shop during the bailer makers. Oh, don't get me wrong, boys, they were doing their best, they thought. Aye. But they didn't know about the wee Jap working 24 hours a day, because he didn't fucking know it was dark outside. <laughs> Aye, you're the life and soul of the party here. Always were. Cheer up, I'll not belong to the fair. When I was at the tools, I met a Jap. I came in the yard. We thought he was going to place an order. We were just saying a wee kick to see who we went about things. Kept looking at his watch, you know, time in motion. Aye. Aye, well, we thought we were doing fine, but you could tell that he thought we were taking a hell of a long time about it. I was up on the stage and looking down, he'd vamoosed. He thought the job should have been finished. Oh, I think I've got guys with plasticine now there, see the welders. I wouldn't buy anything after him. What, take my advice. If you're getting a TV, rent one, don't buy it, especially if it's a Japanese one. You'll be back at the shop in a week when you find out there's no a fucking tube in it. <laughs> what are you having? Oh, well, this is a double ding-dong. Oh, well, I've got news for you. Two whiskeys, Eddie. Ah, uh, maybe we need a war. Oh, send my soul for saying that. Maybe that's the only way out. Ah, uh, but war's the end. Maybe there's nothing to be done about it at all. What's getting to you, Huey? Look, daily record, front page. Prosperity returns to the river. Job guarantees in the Clyde. It's in the record, Huey. I know, I know. I just get these fugues. Sometimes it takes me days to get back in the straight and narrow. Well, there's your whiskey. Oh, well, maybe that'll do the trick. <laughs> oh, hey, don't listen to me, boys. There's a queen taking shape across the road there. And the pride I've got in her and the hell lot is a brigadier to a glassy. Here's to you boys and to her and all. Pride of the Clyde. Pride of the Clyde. Is that a horn already? Hey, you better check the timekeeper doesn't get slanty eyes. I wish I was going to have by with you, boy. No, serious. I suppose you've got to go, lads. I well, all the best. See you later. Aye, just so. Just so. George. Well, that's it started. On its way. Aye. Soon she'll be in the colours. A while yet. Christ, it's freezing. Easterly. Easterly one. Aye, uh, it's all right for you and your crumby. <laughs> but I bet that hat keeps the best of half your napper. Well, you were right. Uh, yeah, you didn't wear it just to quarter folks' pipe oak. 
No, no, no. You were right about the colours. The black and the white. And the red below the waterline. Aye. Bonnie. But, uh, you're not one of them, are you, George? What? You know. What? One of what? You know. The hat and the handshake. <laughs> well, I've been asked. Many's a type. Oh, I'm sure you have, George. I mean, you'd look pretty adjacent, holding the Bible and a tray around your neck in front of the Pride Ibrox flute band. <laughs> Everybody thinks you're amazing anyway, so I'm surprised you had any uncertainty about joining. I believe the new boy you've taken on is a Catholic. Oh, whatever he is. Good. Look, that I do my good. job. It's about time. Some of the men here. Oh, uh, you're still a stubborn bastard, Georgie. Nobody's going to catch you with your trousers at half mast looking for a clean job for that boy in the drawing office, eh? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong, George. I, mean, I wouldn't hold it against you. Many's the man's found the mason's apron suitable attire on his way to the boardroom. By the way, what do they do with these compasses? <laughs> Hope it's no sore. I told you I'd never join. And Helen's no a Catholic, is she? Of course no, not. I know. I just wondered how somebody like you could have failed the fitness test. I mean, church elder, second tenor and Handel's Messiah at Christmas. I mean, you're it. You look like a bigot. <laughs> but it's always been a source of some agitation among the boys, especially them that join. Couldn't he have got a job in here if they hadn't he? Yeah. I just thought. Well, when I was a boy, I, I knew the management were full of them. And I met a few of them. And of course, I was asked, and I've nothing against them. But the ones I have met, even in the good times, were the kind of management that never made a man secure, you know. I think we're talking about the same kind of bastards, George. No, 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 seriously. I mean, even in the good times. When a major contract was launched, they laid off the black squad. You're talking to me, George. Mostly the boiler maker. Okay, okay, my brother. Exactly. Exactly. And then when the next contract reached a certain stage, and not until then, the black squad was required again. I watched these men moving from yard to yard, and nobody else, not in the good times anyway, suffered really long spells idle. But it still bred insecurity and that's when i saw that these fellows i took to represent the sort of secret folk you're talking about that's what they wanted i hated that kind of management i'd be scunnered if i was tarred with the same brush i hated the way they they couldn't resist leaving a wee flutter of fear in people's hearts nobody in here knows you george you know I know, but it's still hard talking to you with that on. It's not that you don't suit it. You suit it too bloody well, in my opinion. Hey, put it back on, George. There's more than one up there might aim a rivet at your nut. <laughs> About your business, I'm trying to build a boat here. Round up the usual skivers. Casablanca. Aye, <laughs> don't start me. <laughs> well... Here's God's blessing on us all. She'll be grand. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please take your partners for a quick step? A one, a two, a one, two, three. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next dance is an excuse me, which means when the music stops, will all the gentlemen please change partners? Oh, Come on. Let's see. Let's see. Ah. Let's see. A rare band! I can't hear you! I says it's a rare band! Aye, so it is! You still at school? Aye! For school, do you go in? Excuse me. What? It's an excuse me, Billy. Oh, 
Very, very good, Andy. <laughs> oh, look, I'm easy. I'm chatting up the lassie I was way, but we've been caught up in the rules and regs as well. Aye, all right. Christ. It's like how we don't want to go to the union meetings, you know? Maybe see you <laughs> later then, eh? Hi, okay. It's a high school, by the way. What? School I go to, it's a high school. I'm leaving in summer. Is that a blow, Billy? Aye. Oh, well, no, no, really. Look, I will see you later, eh? Aye, okay. People are that staunch about here, son. They should probably issue orange or green sashes at the door to avoid confusion or permanent heartbreak. Excuse me. Is that you back for me, eh? Aye. What's your name? Billy Kelly. Your big sister was in my class. She was your Bridget McDonough, aren't you? That's right. You don't look too pleased about it. Just thinking about something else. You go along, but... Nah. Well, no yet, anyway. Well, that's handy. I mean, you living nearby. I mean, handy. I suppose it is. Christ, in films, they hone out their telephone numbers. What? Oh, skip it. Cushy number, this. This is a cushy number. Aye. Don't exert yourself, whatever you do. Do you exert himself? Chance to be a fine thing. Three nights on a Sunday. Double time. Definitely. Holidays abroad. Yes. Not me. I know. The BB camp. Oh, aye, I forgot. I mean, he got me tickets for the maze marching in the Govan Town Hall, but we for tickets for Francie and Josie, so... Ah, never bother yourself, Bobby. Great success, though. No, I just forgot about the brigade. Must take up a lot of your time. What does the wife say about the camp? No exactly Butlins, is it? Well, we get home in the summer for at least a week. We do get home. Where's that? Bangor. Wales? <laughs> no, County Down. Oh, Ireland. Where do you think I was, Doheed Mars? Uh, well, I was only asking. I mean, civility costs nothing. Yeah, it's not a wee boys with a pillbox hat you're ordering about new, Martin. <laughs> There's a hat in the horizon. It's Bear. Oh, boy, it's going to be one. <laughs> Here, listen, who fancies a game of fives? Aye. Well, I don't fancy a game of fives. I fancy seeing you do some work for a change. You'll have plenty of time to play fives when this job's done. You might have the rest of your lives. You're cheery. You too, Tootie Fazell. Let's get into you, Martin. Hey. OK, OK, I'm going, I'm going! <laughs> Father will kill you. How? You know how. He'll kill you. But he's... he's a Catholic. Don't tell me. Anything else that's in his favour, it's cancelled out. <laughs> I mean, you know that, Hen. We're no modern, Sheena. 
I don't mean oh, to. Oh, you're the light of his days, Sheena. And here you are. Well, what do you think? Oh, I don't get to think. I get you into trouble. Now, you get the lodgy to accept the church instead of the chapel before your father finds out there was a problem in the first place. But my dad's always going on about it. Oh, I know, I know. Darren, I've lived for 20 years with how he hates the Masons and the Orange Lodge. But this is a different situation. And it's a situation I wouldn't want you to be confronted with. Talk's cheap. See what I mean? I mean, your father's a BB officer. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. No, I've had him with who wins the Wayfarer's badge, the Ambulance badge, the Duke of Edinburgh's award, and, and what we Lordy would benefit the most for being singled out as the best recruit. <laughs> but we've never had the problem with a Catholic joining, especially one that might want to get married on to his daughter. I mean, Sheila, you know what it's like. It's like Rangers. It's no help to me telling me it's like history. I love him. Are you sure, Dan? Are you sure? Oh, it's what I want. Well, I'll talk to him. It might not do any good, but I'll talk to him. Aye, maybe he'll see sense, eh? <laughs> Aye, maybe. Do you think, Mum? Oh, don't ask me. It's the new generation. <laughs> he might see that same as me. And he might know. I doubt it. You see, he would have liked you to. Oh, well, so would I, but you don't. He sees some boy, and he sees you. And if you don't happen to meet him coming out of the communion, if you meet him in the dancing, or somewhere where religions know the issue, then how do you know he's a Catholic? Oh, and you know he's nice. And mother, you know he's nice. What does it matter if he is? Your father, if he heard, I'll tell your father. Oh, Mum. Oh, oh, there, there. Your father's a good man, Sheena. All he wants is your happiness. I, I mean, thank God he's no some folk, eh? <laughs> Aye, thank God he's who he is and what he is. He'll cope. He will. Give him time. Now, do you promise me you'll give him time? Aye. Time. And he'll walk you up the aisle. Even if it is the chapel. <laughs> Listen, it's no funny. I know. Oh, you're terrible, so you are. Do you know Gordon Forsyth's in the drawing office? Oh, Gordon Forsyth's no in love with me. He's in love with Helen Lees. Oh, Helen Lees. And there's no problem with Gordon Forsyth. She's a Protestant. And I love a Catholic. I mean it, Mum, I love him. I, I know. Well, eh, uh, I'll talk to your daddy. I'll pick the right moment, you know. Right, there's a ship underway. It's a good time. Aye. Thanks, Mum. Look, it's cold.
So, the shithouse clerk, he says to me, <laughs> he says, Huey, you've got seven minutes. Well, that's a long time. Well, it can be for some folk. And I don't want to lower the tone of the conversation, but I was never one of those that could guarantee just what was going to happen when I got into the heads. Besides which, I thought that time in a shite, well, it's an invasion of privacy for one thing. So just for badness, I went in by, took out a copy of the noon record and started studying for. I mean, I didn't even need to go. I just wanted to wipe the seven minute shite off the rule book, so to speak. <laughs> I didn't even my watch on, but I knew the big toe rag would have his. Anyway, I'm sitting there. Float next to me says, you got a match? I'll give them one. Float the other side says, you got a match? You some one too. You got another one, says somebody else. I realized what was happening. Then I heard. <laughs> Bang! There's this colossal explosion. Christ, they're all setting fire to themselves. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Oh, the noise was that loud. I thought the whole place was going to blow up. <laughs> Aye, but the pong was worth it. Because that was the end of the seven minute shout. <laughs> oh, you're caught. I couldn't get That's a nice. bus. Thanks. So this is it. Come on, we we'll walked in. I don't want my daddy to see me. How no? Well, my mammy's gonna talk to him. Look, well, listen, I'll talk to him. Come on. Hi, okay. It's big. Well, you never been in here before? No. What, no evening lunch day? Well, no. Can he describe it? Fantastic. It'll be a long time yet, though. A fair first. So you told your mother? Well, no, exactly. I kind of started the ball rolling. Look, how can you know? Just tell her we're going to Campbellton. Oh, I tried, but I couldn't. I told her Anne Stevenson and Morris Burns were going to the Isle of Man together, and they're not engaged either. And where are they going? My mummy and my daddy. Aye. Well, he's an officer in a boys' brigade. So he goes to camp. Lum Lash. <laughs> he takes my brother to Ireland for the second week. I had forgot he was in the BB. He's an elder as well. But he'll no let me turn. Listen, I've got to work late tonight. I thought we were going to the pictures. I will maybe tomorrow, eh? What's on? Don't know. Who cares? 
Who's looking at the picture anyway? Oh, oh, oh my feathers here and I stop at you. <laughs> I'm going on it one day. Determined. What are you talking about? The ship. I'm going to go on it. New York or well, maybe just a summer cruise. I've no right decided yet. When you get seven draws? No, no. I'll save up. I might take you off and get this feather of yours sorted out. Well, I mean, what's wrong with just gone on holiday together, eh? Oh, you know what's wrong with it. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I doing this? Sitting here being a Jonah half the time. I'm no old, I should be working. I could be a retread like an old tire, you know. I'm not doing it in our tube yet. It takes a while for it to dawn on you, you're a back number. And then one day you realize what's happening to you, and there's nothing to do for it, just sit here, human. You don't know you're getting on a boy's nerves. And you don't know that they know what's happening to you. And they're just letting you come it. They know your heat's through away motors. But they let you harangue them just the same because... Well, they've got a boat to build. You haven't they? They know you're a relic. You're one of the boys, so it's okay. Gets you that jealous of the lads you find yourself. I want to know that stuffing out of them. Telling them tales that come out of the ark. How it will. That's what's coming out of your mouth, but inside. Inside. You're really that chuffed with them. You'd never be done singing their praises. Oh, Christ, it's terrible what being idle does to a bloke. No work on it, that's your fucking brains. I mean, there must be something a bloke can do. Then it used to any of you know any older. I, will... I mean, you're older, but you're no old. You're not as old as you thought old men were when you were younger yourself, not at all. You're no old. You might not be the best advert for the productivity scheme or the, or the PBR. You might not have the payment by your results, but you're not done yet. That's the whole point. I don't like folk thinking I'm no use to anybody. I could man my post. I could. Oh. Never take the redundancy, Rab. The check has not been written that would make it worth your work. Here am I talking to myself. <laughs> Christ sake, give us a bell, Zeddy. Put I go off my heat all together. There's gotta be some hung out this when it's all done. Ah, but we'll never be on it. I mean, this is Tuxedo Junction. Lights the odds can only imagine it. You can imagine the price he's right enough. What do you reckon? Oh, what for Paul? A half and a half pint. Ah, oh, you don't get a half and a half pint in here. Where do you think you are? This bar doesn't serve beer. Not at all. This is luxury. This is the lanolin in the bath. This isn't the land of the roof and the coal tar. This is imperial leather. Deluxe. You don't get beer here. You get Tom Collins. Who's he when he's at home? It's a refreshment, Rab. Yeah. It's, it's the kind of thing that, that, that Johnny Ray drinks and, and, and Mitzi Gaynor and people like that. What is it, Brad? Uh, well, it's, it, it, it's gin with a, with, a, with a drop of this and a drop of that, and it's all sugared about in a cocktail shaker by the chief steward. And out it comes. There you are, Johnny. He calls him Johnny, the chief steward, you know. <laughs> There's your Tom <laughs> Collins. Gin? Aye. I, I thought he drunk yours, Johnny Ray. Now, I saw that in an advert. 
Ah, oh, you'd believe anything. The advert's just for the dough. The personality, the personality doesn't have to drink it. He just has to say he does. Oh, that's no right, that does. Christ, I wouldn't do that. Ah, oh, well, don't you worry yourself, Archie. Nobody's going to ask you. Uh. <laughs> what? Christ, I, I can just see you, eh? Have a dump. After work, Archie Aird has a dump. Be like Archie. Oh, Christ, a dump's no glamorous. Oh, but if Johnny Ray recommended it, it would catch on with a lot more folk. Oh, Chris, you're daft. What? But c c can you imagine Mitzi Gaynor walking in here after having soaked herself in the lanolin bath and put a squirt or two of the evening of Paris on and she rinses up to the bar here and she says to the chief steward, oh, Barman, uh, he's a dump. <laughs> <laughs> That's not sophisticated. Ah, well, maybe no Mitzi Gaynor, Gus. Eh, but Johnny Ray might. See if he wants it a dump, they'd send it for one. <laughs> Where are they going to get it? The middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> Negotiate the icebergs. Oh, the captain says to the putter, hop over and tell that fucking Eskimo Johnny Ray wants a dump. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would the folk do when they want a dump there? Folk that want a dump are not in the first class lounge. They're not even on the boat. Well, how did it get to New York? New York? Four of that are lucky to get to fucking Danoon. <laughs> well, it's just as well, because they get a dumb fucking Danoon already. <laughs> Squad number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all in through. Thirteen, fourteen. All numbers, two faces forward, march. Now, I want a good effort tonight, boys. This will be your last practice before the display on Friday. And I know you'll want to do well for your mummies and daddies. And for Mr. Taylor, the new minister. Our special guest will be Dr. Hanlon, who will give a talk on his work with the Livingstone Mission out in Africa. So your best effort. Move to the right, right, turn. Left, left wheel, quick, march. Hook it up! Hook it up! It might be all right! Hook it up! Come on! You never know! Jeezy one base, quits it! Now you're cheery. Who is it, Frankie? Billy Kelly. He just slipped. Tears that made the clade. Paradisum deducant angeli in tuo adventus suscipiante martyres et perducanti in civitatum sanctum Jerusalem, chorus angelorum se suscipiat et cum Lazaro quandum paupere eternum habeas requiem. Amen. Summer fair. Aye. He was going to come up on the weekend Saturday. <laughs> so it is, Lawrence. Many's the time. Camelton. <laughs> so it is. 
What? The dummy was just saying it's a good turnout. All denominations. Quick! March! London, nothing to do with New Year. There's no fiddlers for Shetland on the BBC. I like them. How you no watching it then? Oh, it's no worth it. If I switch it on, oh, I get Big Archie telling me it's the wrong image of Scotland. <laughs> when I ask him what the right one is, he says it's the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards playing Amazing Grace. <laughs> <laughs> so to avoid argument, I just came out here with my advocate. <laughs> I don't like the New Year, so I don't. How no? Can't help it. I keep thinking of them, it's maybe lost someday and how the night will bring it all back to them. Yeah, I was just saying that. Wedgies, cheer up. <laughs> Have an advocate. <laughs> Have something. You don't know when you're well off, so you don't. Well, no, maybe I'll do that, Annie. Martin doesn't drink, he just goes to his bed. Oh. But we, I keep a bottle of the Hague's dimple just in case, you know. <laughs> I might just open it. Oh, you do that, Jean. Open it. I might! Ah. <laughs> hey! Oh, dear. What? Do you know where my sister lives? On the name. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your sister? Letty. 
Letty McEwen. No, the name McEwen here. No. Well, Merrick name's Armstrong, so I suppose it would be Letty Armstrong. Oh, aye. Number 27. Ta. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry <laughs> Autumn. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm freezing out here. I'm going in. Nah. Ah, thanks, Dumbledore, one year. Good night. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, G. And many others. Ah. Well, wonder what it would have been like if we would went to Christmas in 1969. <laughs> They want to live in a log cabin. Oh, they don't live in it. They've got a house as well. Okay. They go to the lakes for their holidays. No, I couldn't be done with that. I've seen films about it. It's all wilderness and beavers chewing away. <laughs> They're probably chewing away at your cousin's log cabin. <laughs> Aye, we're all together here. You wouldn't know anybody in Canada. No. Ah, maybe it's this advocate, but there's nothing to beat it here when all the men are working. I mean it. When the ship's launched and you see it hit the water, I'm as proud as any of them. Um, I get a lump in my throat, so I do. <laughs> oh, I don't tell him, but... I don't tell him I've seen the tear in his eye either. Oh, no, I keep that to myself. Where would there be to be proud of in Canada, eh? Oh, look, the wee beavers made a dam. <laughs> no, no for me. I can't wait to see it. The launch. Oh, you don't need an advocate that day, Nessie. You're drunk just with the atmosphere. You even get to like the sound of the pipes playing. It's... Mask. Oh, the morning comes, the dawning frost comes creeping in at every side. But for us who stand together, bitter weather never can divide. Like some
Roddy's taught the dummy to speak. Nah. I heard him. You heard the dummy speaking? Aye. What did he say? I couldn't make it out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, a fat lot of good that is. He just makes noises. No, no, Sam. You see, Roddy would say the word and then the dummy would repeat it. I thought you couldn't make out what the dummy was saying. Well, I was a bit far away and I'm a bit duller hearing at the best of times. What are you? Deep. Well, that's in there. No, I think if you were close to, you would find out that the dummy would have a thing or two to say about things. I will mind you. I've always thought that Roddy could understand them when they were at the chores like. I mean, how else would the dummy know what to do? I know that is my point, Gus. You see, if Roddy says to the dummy, run down to the bookies and stick a dollar on Maritana on the 330 at Pontefract. Now, it's no use the dummy nodding and taking a dollar and then coming back with a pile of shavings and chippings with the carpenter store of it. Well, what would Roddy want for the carpenter store? Oh, no, no, ma. I just said that, Sam, to prove my point, that he can speak, and it stands to reason. Guys, I used to think he was deaf as well. I mean, some of the things I've said in front of him, and if he can speak, must think I'm a right poor nagger. Mm. You are a right poor nagger, sir. Hey, are, are you sure you heard them? Well, it wasn't exactly Reginald Bosenkett reading the news at ten and a good night, but the odd word was clear enough. What word? This is a dummy we're talking about. I know Roddy's one of the best, but he's not exactly Ruby Keeler or whatever old woman's name was that taught on wee last he's speaking on picture. Mandy. No fucking Mandy, that's a British picture. <laughs> An American woman, she invented a deep and dumb semaphore. Oh, don't you get me started, Archie. What word? What word? <laughs> Kel. 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 He said Kel. Kettle. Well, it was about tea time. <laughs> Roddy and the dummy were just sitting there, and Roddy looked out into the fire, and the dummy looked back at Roddy and said, Kettle, and Roddy said, Aye. And the dummy went. Well, I suppose he went and filled the kettle and made the tea, but he definitely said it. Ah, I don't believe you. <laughs> nice. It's no possible, you see. Dummies like that are born without the makings of their voice. Sounds right. Ah. What were his horns dead? His horns weren't doing anything. He was just sitting there and he said, Kel, no, the dummy's horns, Roddy's horns. <laughs> was there a tic-tac, a sign? No! Christ, you think it was all done with mirrors or something? <laughs> they were sitting there having a conversation and the dummy answered them like anybody else. But he is the anybody else, he's a dummy. I'm done, he's hey, fucking uh, dummy. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, what? Any hats about? Oh, do Right. No. Right. Now look, nothing's going to get settled on this ship tonight until we get this thing settled once and for all. Do you fancy a bet on this? I sure Oh, no, no, come on, that's not fair. You can't go betting on folks' handicaps. Guys, if you can speak, it's a miracle. A thing like this could drive you back to the kirk. And he said kettle. Across my heart and hope to die. Right, Sammy, you keep a look out for the hats. We're going to do them by. Come on. Right. Oh, wait a minute. If I don't come, how am I going to know if he can speak, if he can't speak? Well, tell you. Oh, he well, didn't believe the actually when he tell you, so how am I supposed to believe you? Oh, 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 well, you've got a point there, Sammy. Oh, come on, come on. Hurry up, come on. Oh. How are you? <laughs> See what I mean? Hey, 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 hey. Persevere, persevere. I, uh, uh, Lawrence. Now, I tell these fellas that Roddy's teach you to speak, but they don't believe in miracles, so are you going to give the odd word just to prove my point? Eh? <laughs> are you? Are you? <coughs> Come on, Lawrence. Any harm done, I mean, the old phrase would do. It's just to prove my point. Would you oblige me, Sonny? On your cell, what do you say? No, <laughs> no. What's this? Oh, hammer. Lawrence, say hammer. <laughs> oh, hey, come on. We're wasting our time. Come on, back to the tools. Come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, don't embarrass him. Gut is right. What's folk got to think of it? See you try 
make intelligent conversation with a dummy no fingers when I've been seen. I'm not trying to make intelligent conversation. Try to get him to say hammer or spanner or, or piece or anything. It's, it's just to prove my... Because I heard him. I heard you, didn't I, Lawrence? One son gives a break, what do you say? He says nothing, that's the point. Let's vamoose. Wait a minute. What's this, Lord? Ruler! On yourself, son. Ruler! <laughs> oh, gee, that was a bad job, Archie. Who says? You let me down, son. Try that, the lad. Come on, shift. Shift. I heard them. Boys, Brigade Honor, I heard them. Aye, that'll be right. Training. I'll be the order of the day once this can see words. See me, see me. I didn't want to be a pattern maker. I wanted to be a judge, but I didn't have a Latin. <laughs> so, what are the boys today when the seam dries up, eh? What are you talking about? Figure a speech, Eddie, figure a speech. This might just be a fool's paradise. That's what it says in the paper, anyway. Well, I thought you must have fixed it up to somewhere. Oh, I'm as cynical as an axe man, Eddie. Mere so, to be honest. I am very cynical. Christ, I didn't believe Celtic would win the European Cup. <laughs> That's how cynical I've been in my day. But I love boats. I'm no cynical about anything to do with that ship across there in the yard. Hey, when I was at the tools, and I used to see a ship that I'd worked on coming down the Clyde, I used to feel, yes, pride. It's just in you, Eddie. It's in the lot of us. That's the hill problem. Aha, uh -huh, that's the back shift done. the problem? It's a finger. <coughs> a scalp. No, it's not a scalp. Not at all. This is a disability. I don't think you realize how hard work affects folks' hard capacity work. To, to... Hard work? You're talking to me about hard work. <laughs> Have you ever been in here on a Saturday night? Hmm? Casuality. Certainly. <laughs> Certainly I've been the casuality. What exactly is the problem, Mr. Sloan? I'm very busy. Oh, well, I would be busy. I'd be very busy. I mean, I'd be the tools of it, wasn't it, for this nurse? Ah, it's the white finger. I suppose you're deaf as well, hmm? Pardon? <laughs> Beg your pardon? I'm a bit dull of hearing. I've got a hearing aid, but I keep forgetting to attach there it. There are it. those and such as those think some of you aren't as deaf as you make out. I, 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 you have to speak up a bit louder, sister. Look, you see, I am a bit dull of hearing. <laughs> Could you take it off? Oh, certainly, certainly, yes. The small private room. The goon that does not quite day up at the back. <laughs> oh, 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 I've been here before, sister. I know the drill. Oh, hey. A lifetime of craftsmanship has done me in. The stool. Just the stool. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, no, I, I haven't brought you a stool today, sister. I mean, a, a, a sample was not required. I, I could maybe come back tomorrow, but no, no, I'm sure that you could make a first attempt at diagnosing the, what is it, the, 
The whiteness of the finger was it. Oh, look, maybe I could manage you one wee sample in a private room, but I still know that would be impossible at this short notice, sister. The finger stool. Oh, the finger stool. I'm sorry, Hen. I thought you meant your own. Hey, Right, let's have a look. Oh, hey. See the money the capitalists have made out the sweat of that finger? It would take you and me abroad for our holidays. Well, some with worse are still working. Ah, and strength to their arm, sister, strength to their arm. I have no much hope for the future health of their budgets, have you? What do you expect to get for this? Oh, cure, nurse, I pray for a cure. <laughs> There's no cure. All right, I'll take the compen. <laughs> oh, I don't decide the compensation. I just decide whether or not there's a case. Well? Well, it's a white finger, all right. <laughs> it's no. Oh, it is classic case. You sure? Aye. Oh, well, I really got it. Yes. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, I was just coming it. I mean, I didn't think I was really ill. I want gas. I want anesthetic. Oh, there's no operation. No, I'm not having an amputator. I'll thaw it, sister. I'll thaw it. It's not a question of... Maybe don't use my bloody finger. <laughs> now, calm down, Mr. Sloan, and take this note down to the office, and you'll be awarded the appropriate sum in compensation. It doesn't have to come off. <laughs> no, I don't think amputation is necessary. Oh, you know, eh? Oh, thank Christ for that, <laughs> Phew, you know relief, letting a dandy. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> Here, take this down to the office. All oh, right. So this is just a typical case, sister, eh? I'm afraid so. Mr. Sloan, can I give you a piece of advice? Certainly, certainly, sister. What's that? At least wear the hearing aid. Yeah, wear the hearing aid. You don't have to plug it in. No, I don't plug it in. But at least wear it. Wear it. Otherwise, people might think you've taken money under false pretenses. Fa which I know you haven't. False pretenses? False pretenses? Me? Me? Hey, I was in the Queen Elizabeth. I built the fleet. I was indispensable. Sure thing. A close second at Hamilton Park a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> a close second? They're still out looking for it with a bale of hay. <laughs> Each way? Not at all. On the nose. Hey, you're confident. <laughs> ah, he's made of money. <laughs> Can hardly lift his pipe hole. <laughs> uh, I know always be like that, though. Just stick around, son. <laughs> oh, listen to Jonah speaking. No, no, straight up. It's all right for the likes of us, because we've got the launch date to look forward to. Then after that, there's all the finishing off jobs to be done. But see for the likes of the Black Squad, son, it's... It's a one-way ticket to stunning at the street corner. They'll no need you to take the betting slips down to the bookies for them. They'll be able to stun in a bookie shop all day if they want. Well, Archie's right, son. The day comes, it's first and second class citizens. Oh, we're all right. You'll, you'll be all right, Andy. Roddy will see you okay. How many? Oh, 200 sometimes. Maybe more this time. Well, I mean, they took on a lot of extra men to keep up to the timetable. 400. Oh, no. I say 400. 400 men. Oh, well, we can thank our lucky stars. You know in charge, eh, Rab? <laughs> Just the one. Oh, uh, uh, Champs Elise. <laughs> Champs Elise. Oh, I crash that one as well, son. Oh, 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 I've had a jokey fall off in a flat race. Ah, ah maybe you're the lucky one, Archie. You know, I sometimes think God gives folk like you an early sickness. If gambling's no in their blood, the rest of yours is doomed. There you are, son. It's a, a three cross and a roll up. I right? can't okay, explain to the line, right? Right. Yeah, there's the door. <laughs> you're breaking out. I've uh, got I've a bit of inside information, you know. Hush, hush. Are you going to tell your mates, sir? 
I thought you'd warned yourself half, Archie. Aye, so I have, Rab, but I'd stretch a point for a sure thing. Come on, what's the gen? It's a coup. A coup to the likes of you. <laughs> a betting coup. Here, son, try and get the black squad interested. They could be doing me a windfall in very short order. Ah, uh, it might not be true this time. I've never known it different. No. There's one day you feel it. Everything in the future. Launch coming up. Then all of a sudden they start laying the men off and everything's in the past. Are we going to do any work today? I'm off. Thanks for the tip, Rab. <laughs> See ya. Get the hell out of here, you. We've more to do with our money. That's a big line on. Who tell you? Rab. Oh, he's got his Irish connection. So he <laughs> says. Oh, well, that's good enough for me. I'll have a fiver on it. Right, yeah. A fiver? Do you know what's going to happen here in a couple of days' time? Aye, we're going to lay off the black squad. And then what? Well, we'll be all right. I mean, we're welders. We're not going to be walking about all nostalgic about the death of Riveton. And what if there's nothing to weld? What have you heard, Martin? I'm saying nothing. But the talk is the management they're going to open up the Royal Bar when the boys are finished with it and give us a refreshment. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, Martin's cute. He knows that's a ploy. To sweeten you up with a glass of something then sicken you with the announcement. Well done, the black squad. Don't know how the hell we're going to deal with dookies. But after Friday, we're going to try. My experience, a reception to soften the blow means five or six hundred men. Bastards! It's not confirmed yet, but that's a rumour. Roddy was talking to one of the hats. Go ahead, do he? You might need Rob's tip to come in. Roddy, can you not see I'm busy? I don't fancy in the day. Big Martin says it's 600 men. And there's going to be an announcement at some function in the Royal Bar. It's only a rumour. No, <laughs> Hell of a big rumour if the dummy heard it. Watch your mouth, son. Sorry. You'll be all right, son. But 600 men. I'm no good. I wouldn't be responsible for my actions. I'd rather hear about it with my people. Oh, what's for you? I'll not go by you, eh? Aye, some letter. Maybe we'll be okay. She's with the black squad. There's not 600 men in the black squad. Maybe there's an order. Aye, maybe. I'll be bugger all if I don't get this one done. Best ever. What's that? I want you to put these rumours out your head. Maybe it is the last one, but it's your job to make it the best. You've got a delight in it. Look, here we are in the grey. The only light a wee bit spark for the welder's torch. You hardly see the sun. Just the grey, the rust and the wind after water. And here you've got to delight in something. Like, like the farmer delights in watching things grow, eh? The bud, the tuber, the flower itself. Well, for me and for you, Tay, son, she's still growing. Look, shaping. Getting prouder and prouder as she stands waiting for the day of the launch. Oh, there's glory in it, all right. And like the farmer, 
harvest, home, or whatever he calls it, same on launch day. They'll all know it was us that did it. They'll know you were here. I and beyond. When she sails up the Hudson River with all the toffs on board, they'll know you were part of it. They'll know of your kind. So you can't be worrying yourself with rumors and bad news. You've got to be blinkered like a horse till the job's all done. <laughs> Got a jag on. You've got some buxy hoots up somebody in the distillery. That smell in the cork and it does his brains up. Almighty. You get the bag for this? Poor soul. You will know me by the hand that drive cold iron through the tide. You will know me by my river. You will know me by this light. There'll be no mention of him going up his nut. It would just have been Clyde Bosses. Bag dummy. How would that look just prior to the Queen's champagne, eh? Aye, they're no daft. Well, good luck to him. Good luck to you, Tagoth, for backing Roddy up. I hear Big George Bear was the one that swung it with the rest of the management. Him and Roddy are like that. Well, drink up, boys. The granny's a cowboy. Well, come on, drink up, boys. My round. Eddie, mere drink. Funny thing, you know. This is the first time I'll have been at one as a spectator. Funny that. Hi, but I'll throw my bonnet up in the air just like the rest is. Hey, I got a lumber at one once. Hey, staunch the reason, never know your luck. What one did you got a lumber at? The Ark. <laughs> Aye, well, it was a while ago, right enough, but I got a lumber, all right. She was convinced I built a whole fucking boat. <laughs> Here's my drink. Thanks, Andy. Right, boys, cheers your glasses. Here's Ter and all his sail. Pray to the Clyde. Pray to the Clyde. Scotland, 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 they say bra. My heart is high in Scotland. Go on, say far Almost over, eh? Aye. Coffin now. Why not? 
Helen's trying to get me to give them up. She's got me smoking these things with the spats and the no tar. Better off smoking a pencil. Yeah. Will it be the last? Of its kind, in its scale, in its beauty. Is that your hat? Pardon? Your lunch hat. The special bowler hat you wear at lunches. No, no. <laughs> no, that's for tomorrow. No, no. <laughs> Superstition, I suppose. I wear odd socks. Get away. Don't tell anybody. Cross my heart. Odd socks. I thought you were a Christian. God knows. I'm sure he does. <laughs> when the water is turned, my bonny, I'll shut her my window and hide from the day. When the ship meets the river, men's hearts sail away. How's Ginny? Fine. Helen? Fine. Fine. We're, uh, we're trying Spain for our holidays this year. It's a chartered flight. Malaga. You're made of money. No, really. It's not too expensive. You're there in no time. Do you not feel... I mean, you of all people, George. Do you not feel a bit of a traitor taking the plane? It's the future. And we're in the past, you mean? We're done, Roddy. You know it and I know it. We just didn't realise what progress meant. There's going to be an aeroplane gets you to New York in four hours. I doubt if it'll be getting me there. No, you know what I mean. Ah. Still takes her the best part of a week. There's still folk that's no in a hurry. Few mm -hmm. sure now. Gay few. Helen's worried about clashing. Oh, she no been well again? No, she's tip top. It's her clothes. Oh. The colours. Clashing with you know who. I mean, she's always that vivid on lunch day, and it's unlike her, but Helen's chosen to be rather vivid herself this time. <laughs> well, I tell her not to give it a second thought, George. I mean, there's vivid and vivid. I mean, I'd have thought that Norman Hartnell has still got one up and Weaver to wear her, or <laughs> Trerons, or whatever it is that Helen gets fitted out these days. Yeah, I suppose so. I always like it when it's herself on launch days. Aye. Hey! Remember the 552? Five, five, Nothing to do with me, but I'll never forget it. The princesses playing away with that wee model up on the podium. That got launched okay, but the real thing just stood there. Seemed an eternity. Aye. Right. Just like tonight. How? Easterly wind. Slowing back the incoming tide. Everything's got to be Perfect. Ah, oh, but she didn't bat an eyelid. Not an eyelid. The Waynes were playing away. The time came eventually, and the old queen pressed the button. She was wearing Helia that day. I think it was Helia. I don't know. I've seen the film that many times. I seem to remember her in black and white. <laughs> No, no, her, it would be Helia. It was Helia, I remember. So we're done, eh? Looks like it. The order book's like a skunk's diary. <laughs> we gave them everything we were asked. Everything required. Is there nothing left of our all that's wanted anymore, eh? I mean, we were taught the work is a way of things, but that's not a thing of the past. They'll blame the unions, they'll blame the management. They'll blame you, George, and me. But that's just progress, eh? Just people in a hurry to get to Malaga or New York. People not having the time to look at the view. And this hurry, this 
rammed scam will be the death of the likes of us, George. Ah, there'll be the new work. Hope to Christ. Maybe it'll know of the same heart. Maybe it'll not be what we were bred to. And it'll not be what we promised the Waynes. I mean, it's all changed. Don't get me wrong, I've known change. Big change. We both have. But this, I mean, this changes the template. The whole malarkey. Maybe it'll see us it. Maybe it will, nay. Wind's dropping. That's right, George. You worry about the morrow. Bring this chapter to an appropriate close. Nothing else to do. What have the unions done? The unions are just men united. Oh, oh don't start me. You'll be telling me next that nothing's been the same since the machine replaced the left and right rivet squad and it was a black day when the welding came in. I'm inclined to agree with you there, by the way. Ach, maybe the Waynes would be better off without the uncertainty. Maybe a job you're sure of is a job you can get to believe in. And sometimes your pride just gets in the road. Nah, but when you see it, not first light, when it's all finished, when you can really stand away from it and see it, we can't complain. We've been given something perfect to be part of. Mistress Clayton, we better moon, winds dropping, everything perfect. Bang on time. I like things to be just so. It worries me when things get out of kilter. The river will do what she likes. Yeah, she will that. I wonder if she knows that what she stands for is at an end. Uh, I wonder if she knows She's dying. It's not just the yards, it's the people. What folk can he do? Can he all make computers and braziers and whatever else they get up to in these new industrial estates? Ah, well, you can write your memoirs. From lunch to lingerie. <laughs> A life by George Beard. Well, it'll see me out. And you too. So we're the lucky ones, eh? You'd better believe it.
Ah, we'll stay at the tools. Then what? They'll never close us down. Never. What do they do? We'll come back as ghosts to haunt them. The man blames the manager, and the manager blames the man. Or the unions, they blame the unions. Oh, you've heard that one. And in the next breath, the shop steward is blaming the owners. Well, somebody did it. Somebody fucked it up. And I know one thing. It wasn't me. Fired out. The ship's company and the BBC would like to thank the Boys' Brigade for their help in making this programme.
think about seeing what you're gonna see. Right.